Hi everyone, Patricia Warby, Alchemy Therapies here, and another in my ongoing series of conversations with other practitioners. And today I'm absolutely delighted to welcome my friend and colleague, Diana Powley, who's a clinical hypnotherapist and she specializes, like I do, in working with people with chronic fatigue related syndromes. Um, and she uses NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming. Um, but apart from all that, she's also a wonderful human being and a really good friend. And I know we're going to have a fabulous discussion today because we're going to talk about how we use kind of intuition and external guidance, if you like, connection to enhance our practice. So, um, so welcome, Diana, and thank you so much for agreeing to chat with me today. And, and I, I did want to ask you, because I think it's such an interesting story. How did you get to be doing what you do? Oh, how long have you got? <laughs> it's quite, I'm so old, it's quite a long story. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'll try and to just uh, t uh, reduce it down. Uh, I had chronic fatigue syndrome for a number of years. In fact, as a child, I probably had I did have glandular fever at some point, although it was never diagnosed as a child and I was off school for a year. So it probably meant I had the ME then. Um, it was just called growing pains at the time. <laughs> uh, that was the level of knowledge. Um, she's outgrown her strength. <laughs> uh, anyway, then, then fast forward to 20 years ago and it led to the breakdown of my marriage and family uh, so I um, ended up with a wheelchair and carer and as part of the process of going through through the divorce and with the ME hypnotherapy was recommended to me by two or three people and I'd not come across it before so I felt well I'll, I'll give anything a try at the moment I was living as a semi-recluse um, and needed all the help I could get. So I did receive some hypnotherapy then. In that time, as far as I know, we didn't have NLP. We didn't have a number of the other processes that we now take for granted, really. Um, but nevertheless, being able to experience that deep calm and relaxation, uh, lovely positive visualizations was was really beneficial for me at that time. And then post-divorce, and uh, I was not sure quite what my future was going to be, uh, thinking I couldn't go back into the corporate world, which I had been before in HR. Um, I just didn't think I had that energy or would I ever have that energy again? Um, I was pacing myself, you know, having a little siesta after lunch and all that sort of thing to, and have my feet up quite a lot. I'm still recovering slowly, but the, the, the big anxieties of the marriage and the, and the divorce and moving home and all that was behind me. A friend actually said, I've heard of this hypnotherapy course, Diana, I, I've always been fascinated by it. Why don't we study it together? And maybe we could work together or something. Let, let's. Let, why don't we do it together? And because of the experience that I'd had, I thought, well, actually, that's that's not a daft idea. I am a people person. HR was with people. Uh, I, I've experienced it a little bit, and maybe if I run my own practice, I could work out what energy I had and therefore build clients around that. Um, and had my feet up in between. So, so all, all ways around, I thought this is worth a try. So we did do the course together. And as I say, the rest is, is history. But um, and I think basically it, the initial thing was hypnotherapy, although they did combine some NLP within that. Um, and I've subsequently gone on CPD wise every year, more and more courses continually um, expanding my knowledge and my passion for the subject. I just find it, I still find it almost magical, awesome, that we can create change, help pe or rather help people to create change, because in the end it's going on with them, by them. Mm -hmm. um, we are a facilitator to that. But how magical that change can happen so swiftly when you've got the right two people working together in the right moment. 
yeah perfect yeah so i think your story like mine is that you came to be a therapist almost by accident yeah. you know um yeah. we didn't folks wake up one day and go do you know what i'm gonna become a therapist it was it's our own experience yeah. isn't it that has led to mm. that and mm. for me hypnotherapy was um a default sort of experiment really it was like i wonder whether this might add something because i had been working bodily with people um using uh, reiki um, massage those sorts of things and i was finding those very helpful but there were some clients who clearly had some sort of psychological block to getting better mm. and and so i wondered how i might overcome that and i met a hypnotherapist uh, i didn't actually have hypnotherapy unlike you but i met a hypnotherapist who explained how he could deal with conditions like that um, just by engaging the power of the subconscious mind and i was very skeptical i have to say i was like oh that sounds you know um believable how would that work um but it was it was after witnessing what he did and then going on and training myself realizing that no nah, no and what you alluded to is that um you're engaging the part of the brain that actually has about 90 percent of the power doesn't it the yeah, exactly. the unconscious or subconscious brain um yeah. and you can yeah by those guided visualizations or even the more powerful interventions that I know you use, you mm. can change the way the brain changes the physiology, if you like. So you make physical changes yes. as well. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, initially, I actually focused on smokers. Uh -huh. It was all the thing then, you know, it became, it was that the law changed and mm -hmm. it was, um, you could say big business, <laughs> uh, the, the amount of, smokers who suddenly wanted to quit because of the, because of the law change mm. and um and i to think that you could have say a 20 day 30 day 40 day 50 a day smoker who an hour later went out as a non-smoker and and i thought i mean wow to that 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 could be done but but also that opens up in your mind well if that change can happen that quickly with a smoker what about for other things? Mm. And uh, and so you know the the the, the passion to to help people um, make the changes that they felt ready to make, um, yes. whatever the changes that um, grew within me. Yeah. Uh, and then I met um, uh, Elaine. Mm. Uh, actually, before I met Elaine, there was a, a course on. Uh, hypnotherapy for ME, chronic fatigue. Yeah. And so I went on that and that was very powerful for me. Um, I opened up quite a lot for me as well, inevitably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. I couldn't but help take that very personally because of my own background and it certainly hit quite a few nerves with me. Mm. Um, but it made, but that learning was in itself was useful to then realize that with other people with chronic fatigue how they can be can be helped that we you'd actually we just don't need to feel a victim anymore that's one of the key things whatever it is we've got whether it's fear of flying uh, smoking weight whatever it is though it, we, if we can find the right key to turn the lock <laughs> the button to press we can make the changes with that person if they're feeling ready enough to make the change yeah i think that's a very important proviso um the most successful clients i have are the ones that come to me because they're ready you know they're ready and a lot of people will say well what is it you do what's the tool that you use and i say well these these are the tools but more important than the tool is is you being ready and me and you forming a relationship in the sense of a trust yes between yes. us to take exactly you through. in fact what i say to most people and when i remember is tell me on a scale of one to ten where ten is i'm desperate to sort this what number would you give yourself and they've got to be at least an eight yeah. and interestingly enough i think people are quite honest in their own mind as to where they are on that so in terms of whether it's to stop smoking, whether it's to lose weight, whether it's 
I don't know about the chronic fatigue. I'm not sure about that. That's a different, that's a, that's not sure. But most things where there's a finite thing of wanting to change, they can usually tell me whether they're a higher number or a lower number. Yeah, yeah. We often use number scales, don't we? Um, we ask mm. people to rate things as part of, well, to demonstrate that we've made a change. I know I do yes. with the MDR. Yes. Um, yeah. which I learned from you. So thank you very much. <laughs> Wonderful tool. Um, yeah. So I get people to rate beforehand, how much does this trouble you, this memory, mm. out of 10. And usually that has to be quite high. Same with you, really. It has to be yeah. seven, eight, nine. And then we do EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. Um, and we go through that and then I get them to re-rate, you know, and, and usually there's, there's a significant drop or they say, do you know, I can't even find it. That's, that's the wonderful oh. response. You know, I can't find the, I can remember it, but I can't find the emotion. It's, it's just dissipated. I don't have that terrible lurch when I think of it or yeah. that horrible yeah. uh, dropping pit of the stomach feeling. So yeah. I think these tools are really important, but it is also it's we call it rapport in in the parlance mm. don't we but it, it's really mm. about feeling that you are in a a trust relationship where you feel safe to work with this other person mm. and and how do you sort of engender that if you're beginning with someone what are the sort of techniques you use to get that feeling with somebody is it just there or do you kind of pull it in it's a difficult one to say isn't it because I'm sure like you, you're in the moment with that person and some magic sort of happens. But maybe I will be building rapport in some way. Mm. Um, if there's something that I spot in their information that I can, um, yeah. find, that I can connect with, um, then, then uh, I'll do that. Or, uh, I, I, or not necessarily all, but at some point, if my story... Mm is helpful i might mention it mm. if they might say uh i don't know if you've ever come across this issue and i don't know if it can be helped and i don't know if i can you know they <laughs> they all come with their um cynicism i suppose a, a limit of a level of cynicism or disbelief that mm. their situation could possibly be could yeah. be changed um then if my situation is helpful to say I was in a wheelchair. I'm now fit and healthy and running and cycling and riding and dancing and all the rest of it. If I can do that, you can change your fear of flying or whatever it is. Yeah, it's yeah. powerful, actually. Your story is very powerful. I think it's what we call a convincer, isn't it? And um, But I think it's more than that. I think it gives them a light at the end of a long tunnel. Hmm. would you agree it's like you are saying yes. i can do it you can do it and yes. here i am yes i keep i keep it succinct just yes. enough to make the point i'm not there for therapy <laughs> from them or them to tell me anything i don't need that it's mm. very much to help them to put build a little visualization mm. of, for them um and uh, and because they will have been a, some time plucking up courage to make the call true to come and see me yeah yeah it's so a big I, then you you want to give them some hope in that yeah. moment and and believe yes oh oh you know i'm not weird i'm not this that oh you know negative it's more oh we really can sort this and um mm -hmm. and in the meantime maybe i'll say just think of yourself have a little mantra i'm a, I'm a work in progress at the moment <laughs> i i love that phrase i use it a lot i use it a lot yeah. when i'm doing eft with people i'm i i say i'm working on it or i'm work in progress something like that yeah, exactly it's such a de-stressor of the body to say yeah even though i have all these symptoms and i'm suffering yeah. this problem yeah. it's not me as such it's not my fault it's nothing i need to feel shame or blame about that i can mm. release and let go of that stuff it's my past usually it's yeah. the beliefs i have around myself uh the things i was taught by parents or siblings you know um yeah. birth trauma it can go a long way back 
but of course it's changeable and i think that's the essence is what you're saying yes. and, and yes so some things are can be quick fix mm. Uh, sometimes you know the stop smoking as an example can be sometimes there's a lot of other stuff behind it and it might reveal it if that's the plaster that's you know, the sticking plaster over challenges mm -hmm. some um, habits are that um, but some you just have to accept from the outset this is not a one session thing this is working together and believing we yeah. can make the change together and that they're feeling supported yes this important thing mm. absolutely so important that they feel they have support and that mm. you are on the road with them i think yeah i couldn't have put it better you know when we're working with people we're not sort of standing above you saying oh dear that's a shame you suffered all that or well oh, that's a shame you have this terrible habit you know we're saying i know mm. i understand Mm -hmm. I had similar. I've been there too. Yeah, we can sort the, We can work through this yeah. together. Yes. Yeah. They've yeah. most often the people I see anyway with chronic fatigue never had that message, but there's somebody there to help them. Usually, there's no support mm -hmm. in the history, or the support mm -hmm. has been inadequate in some way yes. or another. That's and right. So they've learned to uh, either forget how to feel, close it off altogether, or they become very clingy and mm. obsessive about things, focusing on controlling their lives in certain ways. Mm. So it's, it's just so wonderful to work with another person, another human being that gets what you're saying without judgment and enables you to start on that road to changing it. Yes. Um, and it, and it not needing, um, long a lot of talking either on their mm. part that they say a small amount and you get it they're not having to amplify 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 mm. you can cut through a lot can't you yeah yeah i always say what, what i do is not talk therapy you know it's not the same yeah. we work mm. with the body don't we and yeah. we work with the body's responses which connects to the back brain the, the subconscious brain and we change mm. that patterning I guess yes. is what we're doing. Yes. So yes. when you're working with someone kind of how, how what how do you know how to to proceed? Do you kind of get like a sense a glimmer of something what what is it that you hone in on? It's hard to um generalize. I I, I it, it's more like feelings, I suppose. It might be something they say that Mm. becomes a trigger and and, and i ah this is a, a, a self-belief they've got or mm. whatever you know something that or they might talk about mom or mm. <laughs> you know there are certain things oh, oh they're like flags aren't they, yeah, they are. <laughs> um, but, but and sometimes as part of the meeting they will be um they, they might have said something and I'm saying something that doesn't directly link to something they've said, but it's almost just something comes into my mind that I've got to say it, even though it doesn't sound logical. And so often when that happens, uh, they say, yes, you're right. Because you know? I, because I, I'm probably questioning myself. Thinking, oh God, this is going to sound ridiculous. <laughs> and they say, "No, you're right. I, I'd, I'd, I'd forgotten that, or something." <laughs> mm. uh, where does that come from? Why, why is that happening? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I have sometimes. I almost feel I've got to say something. Like I feel like there's an issue that pops in, and I, it's like somebody puts the idea in my head. Yes. And I'll say, this is really weird, but I'm getting the message that, you, say, your grandma has come into this. Or, um, or do you remember that thing we said last week, you know, and uh, that seems to be relevant here. And I'm not sure why. And, and the client will most often say, ah, yes, yes, because, you know, and they'll explain. Yes. Um, and, and I don't know where that comes from, but I assume when we're working, we are 
resonating with people. We are literally in mm. vibration with them. That's what the, I think. Yeah. Yes, exactly that. Yes, and you that can be engendered over online as well, over the internet, I've found. Um, many mm. people think it's only possible face to face but that's not in fact the case no, no. it can be remote as well and you can still vibrate with somebody over long distances and I, I do believe that that's what's happening when you're when you're really connected with someone and you're working with that great intent that you i know have and that i have mm. is to help them heal mm. um, because we are really facilitators are we not of healing yes. they do the healing yes yeah exactly that that's how i see myself as yes. a facilitator to their healing yes um and they've invited me in to mm. to do that <laughs> yes yeah, so yeah. that's why the willingness is so important isn't it the willingness to mm. heal and uh to trust somebody else yes. to kind of walk the path with you um yes. but it's an exciting journey what i always say to people mm. is this is the most exciting journey you will ever take it it can yeah. be scary at times but i'm going to be here with you you know yes um, it's not always yeah. scary but sometimes yes. it can be because it brings up things from the past and things mm. perhaps you'd rather have buried certainly that was the case with me you know mm. very very different person to how i am now you know mm. you wouldn't get me to talk about emotions emotions were <laughs> yes really yeah no likewise i'm I, I, i'm sure like you as a child you just didn't talk about it you were deemed you know uh, a crybaby as it's too too sensitive and oh it's sort of it's all done in the negative really yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that very sensitivity is what actually tunes you in to your world doesn't it yeah you know whether you're living in harmony or not with your world and and your beliefs can get very distorted when you get those messages you're too sensitive yeah. or you know you think too much that was often said to me mm. um and mm. and i think that's why we end up with chronic fatigue syndrome more than say diabetes or arthritis i think there mm. is this challenge between head and heart if you like right Who we know we are in our heart yeah and how our head conceives of how we have to be in the life to yes love and attention that we need yeah yeah that was definitely the case for me mm. as a child definitely mm. definitely and it, and it so it's a joy to to reach this stage and being able to combine those things now for the good of others yeah. as well as myself yeah it, how how wonderful but it took all those years of not of feeling misunderstood mm. and not quite connecting <laughs> um, yeah. so yeah. so i think it's a wonderful vision of how even the worst situations in life and i know your story is very you know the, there were very painful parts of that story having to leave your your husband and your children to 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 recover yourself and, and as you said, having a carer um, and being in a wheelchair, I mean, nobody would believe that about you now. Um, you know, so you've had to come through an incredible amount of pain in order to get where you are now. But look at the life you've created. Yeah, I've, I actually went to a medium. Someone um, was questioning my actions, thinking, how could you, I suppose? Um, and they said, why don't you see a, a medium and see what they have to say now again i hadn't thought of that before uh, but i thought well just to appease that person i'll go along and went along the hair took me there and um but he stayed out of the room i took some photos as well and um uh, in to show the medium and the medium at the end of it said um I could see a silver light coming out the top of your head and uh, uh, that you're going to go on to help a lot of people and, and I thought well little does she know you know here I am with my care I can't even look after myself and that was what uh, about mm, 18 to 20 years ago mm. and probably I set up practice 16 years ago was it um, and uh, and I've helped thousands since then, worked, worked with thousands. And um, you don't always hear how everyone's got on, do you? Because if, they, if they've if they stopped smoking, they've never come back. You don't know. <laughs> Not going to come uh, back, are they? <laughs> no, exactly. They're all on a year's free support if they, if they didn't stop. 
Fantastic. Uh, if they stopped during the course of the year, they could always come back. So I, I did hope that they would come back if they did need mm. help. But my, my passion is to help people, to, to enable them to make any changes they want to make. Um, that I would rather a person came back if they wanted to uh, fine tune, adjust, improve yes. on what we've done before. Yes. Because uh, some people, whatever it is, the change they want to make, it can be a journey in order to make that change. Yeah, and it's not, as I always say to people, it's not a, a sort of straight line to mm -hmm. healing, is it? it? It can have a few bumps along the way. Exactly, um, because, you know, for some people, they what they think they're coming in to sort may not be the core issue you and i both know that yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just don't realize what they've got <laughs> what the issue is they've really got to sort <laughs> no i mean i do remember actually and i was going to say one of the first stop smoking clients i ever had i don't do that now but one of the first ladies i ever had and she was so keen to finish you know end this habit but what was underlying the habit was a terrible abusive childhood and she kept saying i don't want to i don't want to deal with that i want to stop smoking and i in the end had to say i don't know that we're going to be able to sort that unless we look at the pain of that time and that's not saying that we've got to go over and over and over it but we've got to resolve that pain in order for you to really feel at home in your body when you're at home in your body you won't want to be chasing the 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 emotional pain the escapism, the escapism exactly. of smoking yeah. exactly uh but we had to part company because in the end she just wasn't willing to do that part right. of the work that was needed so sometimes yeah. it isn't what you think um is underlying it but we're here to sort of guide you gently into awareness because we know because we've all struggled with our own situation as well so um mm. well it's it's just fantastic to speak with you and i could go off <laughs> hours i'm sure um but i do try and keep these talks short and sweet if um people would like to get in touch with you how how would they do that diana so um i've got a website dunehypnotherapy.co.uk uh i'm practice out of um clapham london bridge and online you know most of our work at the moment is is online uh, by definition and and actually historically we we, we both work with the chrysalis effect and and uh, people can come from around the world with that so yeah. it really doesn't matter um yeah. my free phone number 0800 093 2024 um so yes do do get in touch if if I can be of any help. We're delighted to, and uh, and I really enjoyed our chat, Patricia. We must do this more often. Yeah, we should do, shouldn't we? <laughs> All right then. Well, I'll interview you next time. Yeah, you can do that. We'll have a reverse one. Yeah, that's an idea yeah. actually. That'd be nice. All right, look forward to it. Okay. Right. Okay, people. Thanks. thanks for listening. Subscribe. Bye for now.